Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our morning service. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I, and I'm an associate minister here at the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Wilkes. Our address is 6758 South Wabash Avenue, located in Chicago, Illinois, and our phone number is 773-488-2991. And first and foremost, giving honor to God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, to our pastor, to the Greater Missionary, the Greater Queens Church family, and those of you online, and any visitors that may be in the house. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you. Thank you for Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And on this Resurrection Sunday, as the world call it Easter, we thank you for Jesus. And we glorify your name, and we magnify your name. And we thank you for being God all by yourself. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank God. Let us turn to the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, starting with the first verse. If you have it and you're able to stand, could you please stand? And the Burgundy Pew Bibles is on page 770. Amen. Amen. Seven seven zero. Page seven seven zero. Isaiah the fifty third chapter, starting at verse one. And the word of God reads thusly: Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of man. A man of sorrow and acquainted, acquainted with grief. And we hid as if we if were our faith from him, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Verse yes. 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Number 5. But he was wounded yes. for our transgressions. He was bruised yeah, 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 for yeah, yeah, yeah. our iniquities. The chastisement mm. of our peace yes, yes. was upon him. Come on now. Come and on with now. his stripes, yes. we are healed. Yes. Come on, May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word and for the edification of our souls. And... We're going back to the meaning of the cross on this Resurrection Sunday. And this time, it's forever healed. You have to accept it. Forever healed, you have to accept it. Father God, it's preaching time. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, give me your word right now. Set Jones to the sideline and fill me with your spirit and that your words come out and not mine. Amen, amen, amen. You know, Isaiah, first Easter, Resurrection Sunday. You know, as a Christian, this is the most important day of the year. Because it wouldn't have mattered what day Jesus was born on if he had not been raised from the grave. Come on now. Because without resurrection, there is no salvation. Without, without resurrection, there 
is no sanctification. Without resurrection, there is no justification. And without resurrection, there is no eternal life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Isaiah was an 8th eighth, eighth century B.C. prophet to the nation of Israel. He, he, his book references Jesus Christ more than any other book in the Old Testament. And the 53rd chapter is sometimes called by theologians as the gospel according to Isaiah. Because he speaks directly. Now, not only to, if you read this chapter, he, he speaks to the, the birth, the verse one, it's, it, verse two is talking about, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. That's a baby. That was the baby Jesus. And, and it goes through his birth, his life, his death, and more than ever, what we need was the resurrection. And Isaiah name means Jesus saved, the Lord is salvation. And he refers to God as the Holy One of Israel. No other book in the Bible uses that term. I, I, Isaiah also is quoted over 40 times in the New Testament. No other book, probably all the books together in the Old Testament are not quoted as often in the New Testament. So Isaiah was the book in the Old Testament that set the foundation for the New Testament. And, you know, I said forever healed. The word healed or Rapha, Rapha in the Hebrew, it means to heal, to become fresh, completely healed. And you know what? As I was studying and preaching and praying this message, we got things in our lives sometimes that we don't want to be healed from. Oh. We got issues. We got problems that we don't want God to take away from us because we're comfortable with our issues. Oh, come on now. And, and see, because he said he didn't say he was going to heal you or you will be healed. He said you are healed. Mm. So once you give your hand to the preacher and give your heart to the Lord, you are healed forever. And ain't nobody else should be able to tell you no difference if you know the Lord for yourself. And you got to know him for yourself. And, and you know, when you don't accept, the Jews, they didn't accept the resurrection. Because they didn't believe in it. That's why they still lost today, some of them. And if you don't accept the resurrection, again, there's no salvation and there's no healing. Because John 3.16 said that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But you got to accept that. You can't, we can't pick and choose what part of the Bible we want to accept and what part we want to sit on the sideline. Mm. You either accept it all or you don't accept any of it. Because God's word is not shorter, is no shorter than what it says. He will do what he say he won't do as he always has done what he said he's going to do. Yes. And you know, we personally have to accept this for ourselves because if any man, in, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You knew today. 
It don't matter what you did last year. It don't matter what you did when you was 15. It don't matter what you're going to do tomorrow. Amen. You already healed, mm -hmm. but you got to walk in it. You got to accept it. Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah, understand yeah. that no weapon formed against me yeah. shall prosper. Yeah, and you got to understand that the words, Lord, the w Lord's word is no shorter than it's safe. And that his word will not come back to him void, but it will yes. go and return and achieve all yes, it will. Yes. that he yes. would yes. have it to. And I'm just crazy enough to believe that. <laughs> and, and when you understand that you are not alone. You are not alone. You can be in the biggest house in the world all by yourself and you ain't alone. Because everywhere you go, Jesus is right there with you. Every time you take a step, he take one with you. Every time you shed a tear, he shed one with you. There's no bad days in my Jesus. You know, I listen to some inspirational, motivational speakers. And um, Steve Harvey says something, and I'm not that great of a fan of Steve, but he says something that made all the sense in the world. People wake up and talk about, oh, this is not my day. You ain't even got out the bad bed yet. You tell them, oh, I'm going to have a bad day. And Steve Harvey said, you know what takes care of that? Gratitude. When you start feeling down, start thanking God. Just start saying everything that you got to be thankful for. Amen. Just start saying it. Just start it in your out loud. The roof over your head, the food in your belly, the couple yeah. of nickels you got in your pocket, the car you're driving, the clothes on your back. You giving thanks to God, you can't worry about that stuff. And we gotta lift them up, not just on Resurrection Sunday. You, I got, I gotta lift them up every day, all day. Because when I don't lift them up, I go down in the mud. I start having crazy thoughts. But when I give it to the Lord, it's already all right. Come on now, and accept acceptance, approval. Reception. Christianity starts with acceptance. You have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior to get in the family. You can know about Jesus. You can read about Jesus. You can talk about Jesus. But until you accept him personally, you're not on the team. You're on the sideline looking in. And this message, and I thank pastor again because, you know, I've been a pastor. I've been around a lot of churches. Most pastors don't let other preachers preach on Easter Sunday. That's, they, that's one of their star Sundays. But thank God for Pastor Wilkes. Because no matter what day or what's going on on that Sunday, unless somebody gets sick, the rotation stays the same. Amen. And, and you know, this message, Easter, Resurrection Sunday, he said, that fifth verse, that's the key verse for the first five, by his stripes, Mama Connie pray that all the time, by his stripes, yeah, yeah. we are healed. He, again, you're not going to be healed in that you might be healed, you are already healed. And when you know that, and you got it in your spirit, your walk gonna change, your talk gonna change, your attitude gonna change, you gonna be a little better. When, when you accept what God got for you, but he didn't say it's gonna be no rose garden. It's going to be some potholes. It's going to be some bumps. It's going to be some storms. It's going to be some rain. It's going to be some wind. But you got to accept it and know 
that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I will always be with you. We don't have humans. They claim to be your friends. Mm. They claim to love you. Come on now. They always got the hand out, some of them. <laughs> but when you need to put your hand out, Come on. where are them saying folks? Come on, see. But when you put your hand, all you got to do is stretch your hand and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know or need. Yeah, come on now. God is God, and he is God all by himself. You know, Jesus paid it all. And to all to him, I owe. I don't know who you owe, but I know I owe Jesus. Because you could have died five times and it wouldn't have saved my life. <laughs> you know, when, when you accept Jesus, the sin is taken care of. The shame is taken care of. Past, present, and future. Mm. The mistakes yeah. are taken care of. On, the now. rejection and the loneliness yeah, is taken yeah, care yeah, yeah, yeah. of. The slavery to sin is taken care of. And the spiritual death, oh. the most important yes, part. Yes, because yes. God said in his word, he said that I desire that not one soul shall be lost. Yes, he did. That's what he said. Yes, he That's what the word said. And, and do the meaning of the cross healed forever but you gotta accept it see we give some things to God and we ask for his help we ask sometimes it might be sickness sometimes it might be finance sometimes it might be them bad kids in the other room <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it might be a whole lot of things that we give to God but once you give it to it, you got to accept that he will do what he said he will do according to his will. You don't get to get God instructions. You don't get to say, I think it ought to go this way. When you, when you give it to him, leave it with him. Because he can do a whole lot more with your little then you could have done with a whole lot. <laughs> and, but you got to accept it. You got to know that God got your back. You got, just like Ice Cube said in Friday, you got to know or you can't show. <laughs> and, and you got to. You got to know the word for yourself. You got to know that you healed. You got to know that no weapon formed. You got to know that Jesus was born of a virgin. You got to know. Yes. That he grew up in a carpenter's house. You got to know that he walked the dusty shores of the Galilee. You got to know on, that he was betrayed by yeah, his own. Yeah, yeah. You got to know Come on, Joe. Come that he was falsely arrested, falsely tried, yeah. falsely convicted, yeah. falsely yeah, condemned. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to know <laughs> that he carried a 140-pound Roman cross up a hill called Galgotha, the place of the skull. You got to know, on, you got to know that yeah. they hung him on that cross. You got to know that he stretched them wide and they hung him high. You got to know that he hung on that cross from six in the morning to three in the afternoon for nine hours. You got to know that they put him in air. Joseph of Arimathea, a borrowed grave that he had saved, he was saving for his own family. You got to know that they put him in there and for three days and three nights. But early, I said early, I said early Sunday morning. He got out with all power in heaven and on earth in his hand. And you got to accept it. And when you accept it, 
God going to take them weight up off your back. Them monkeys that been following you around, yeah. they gonna disappear. Yeah. Them folks that's always bothering you yeah. and harassing you, they gonna treat you nice. Uh -huh. That job that you want gonna yeah. come to you. Yeah. That house yeah. that you've been searching uh -huh. for yeah, come gonna on. come to you. A, that little yeah. few dollars you might need gonna come, cause my God got a thousand hills uh -huh. and all the cattle. Yeah. Yeah. On them thousand hills belong to him. <laughs> Ain't no broke in my Jesus. <laughs> I might be financially challenged at the time, but I ain't never broke. Because <laughs> Jesus ain't broke. He, God gave up his only begotten son. Everything for us. For little old me. And when you know that, you can accept the things of God. You can accept being persecuted. Look what they did to our Jesus. Look at him. Crown with head, a crown of thorns. Whipped them 39 stripes. Slapped. They spit in his face. They did everything but call him a child of God. But guess what? He accepted it. He willingly accepted it on our behalf because that's what we deserved hmm. because we were all sinners and we still all sinners. We just, those that are in the family are sinners saved by grace. Hmm. That's it. Everybody in this world is a sinner and no matter how long you've been a Christian, you're still a sinner saved by grace. You don't get no holy graduation. <laughs> there is no such thing. Yeah, come on now. And you got to know that, though. And you got to know you still going to have some ups and downs. You got to know that people still going to come at you sideways. You got to know people still going to talk about you. You, you got to know that people yep. still going to be on some hater aid mm. because of what God done blessed you for. Not always wit. It's sometimes what God then blessed you for. Mm. Well. Mm. And this day right here, I'm going to get a little personal right now. Tuesday is the 11th. 19 years ago on Easter Sunday, my mother was called to heaven. Mm. And it took me 10 years to accept that she was no longer here. Mother's Day, I didn't even acknowledge it. Easter was just another day. But God had to work on me. Hmm. He had to work on me and let God work on you. You got something that you need taken away. You got something that you can't let go of. You got, you got some attitudes and behavior that you know ain't what Jesus wants. But when you accept him and you accept, see, we have to accept that we have no strength. Mm -hmm. But as Philippians 4 and 13 say, but I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Right. You got to accept we have no power. But the right hand of God, Jesus, got all the power. All right. You got to accept that. Yeah. When we don't accept the things of God, we make life a whole lot more difficult. Mm -hmm. Because even when you're going through your problems and your issues, when you line up with God's will, yeah. the road won't be quite as bumpy. Mm -hmm. The potholes get a little shadowed. All of a sudden, you got new concrete going over the pavement. Hmm. Next thing you know, you got a new car with new tires. Hmm. Because God then took you through the storm. But if you don't ever go through nothing, you can't have no testimony. If you don't know what bad is, how you would you know good? If you don't know what hot is, how would you know cold? If you don't know what on is, 
how would you know off? <laughs> but when you know Jesus, he'll give it to you all according to his will at his time. This hurry up microwave oven world. You look on your microwave, somebody left four seconds on it. You couldn't wait four seconds for the bell to go off. <laughs> That's how much we love the that's how much of a rush we in. Wow. How many times I walk in my kitchen and it's twelve if if you only want it on there for 48 seconds, then point 48. Don't press a minute. <laughs> but we in this, oh, it, it, it ought to be done by now. Oh, woo, woo, woo. Okay. Slow down and accept the things of God. God is not gonna put no stop sign or stoplight in front of you and make you slow down. And you can't accept the things of God. First of all, you gotta have a prayer life. Mm. Second of all, you don't know, you ain't gotta read it. You gotta know it. A lot of folks read it, but they don't know it. Mm. And you, I, and I'm not talking about quoting scriptures. <laughs> Some of the biggest devils I know can quote scriptures. But the devil even quoted scripture in the Bible. And when the devil know the Bible better than anybody in this room, because he was the archangel. He was the main man in heaven. So, and then after you know the word, you got to start putting it in practice. It does no good to know something that you never use. Hmm. No good. You'd be the best auto mechanic in the world. If you never get under the hood of a car, what good does it do you? Mm. So if you're going to use the word as part of your life, know it. I preached last, I think, last month about... You got to be ready to give an answer. You can't answer nothing if you don't know. If you don't know it, but when you know the word, it's also a comfort to your heart because he say, "I am the same today, yesterday, today, and forever." You got to accept that. Folks change on us. God don't change. We change on him. Ah. And as we come to close this message, y'all, again, I say happy resurrection Sunday. I pray, as I always do, that something out of this message from God will stick with you for the rest of your life. Not just today. Because, see, you're supposed to come in here and get some healing and some medicine. Then you're supposed to go out there and spread it and jump for joy, just like I was studying yesterday. And they talk about the man that sat at the beautiful gate. They would pick him up and take him there every day. Every day the temple was open. And he would ask for alms. That's like the homeless people on the street, but it's at the temple. But the Israel's, Israelite society, it was a requirement to give to the poor. It wasn't, you know, it, that's why they set them at the beautiful gate. The beautiful gate was on the east side of the temple. And when Peter and John came, he asked them, he said, as for um, Peter said, I mean, I'm sorry. Philip said, silver and gold I don't have. But what I have mm. to offer is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If you can't offer nobody nothing else, if you know Jesus, that's the best gift you could that's ever right. give them. That's right. Because it'll last forever. Mm -hmm. And when... Philip touched the man's hand and told him to get up. 
instantly. His legs, his ankles, and everything worked perfect. This man had never walked. He was born lame. He had no, even his brain didn't know what walking was. Because when Jesus heal you, you got to accept the healing. And walk in it. When he Amen. takes some of them folks out of your life, stop going back to see them. Amen. When, when That's real. he give you a better job, That's real. you ain't got to put down them friends that's been there all your life, the good ones. Mm. You know, we get a few extra dollars and we think we got to go to a different social structure. Mm. When, when he bless you, be a blessing to somebody else. If you accept God's blessing, you got to put out some for somebody else to accept. And when you do that, you walk a little closer with Jesus. When you do that, you let those that don't know him see him. Because God is love. And if God is love and we following him, we're supposed to follow with love. And again, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday morning service. Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church, on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Kevin Wilkes, and the Greater Queens Church family, 773-488-2991, 6758 South Wabash Avenue, in the city of Chicago, Illinois. And again, remember, not only are you healed, but you are healed forever. And we, Father God, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray right now, at the end of your message, your sermon, touch a heart, a mind, of a soul. Fill them with the word and let them receive what you have on this day out of your word. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Oh, 